Welcome back to Medinair. In this video, let's continue to discuss about case history and orthodontics. In the previous video, we discussed till extraoral examination. In this video, let's begin with intraoral examination. Here, we'll cover only those things which influence the orthodontic diagnosis and treatment planning. In intraoral examination, we need to examine the tongue, palate, gingiva, frenum, tonsils and adenoids and also we need to assess the dentition. Examination of tongue Tongue is a very important muscular organ of the oral cavity and it helps in facial growth as a part of functional matrix. Any abnormality of tongue can upset muscle balance and equilibrium which in turn leads to malocclusion. The major factor of the tongue which is going to influence the occlusion is the size of the tongue. Excessively large tongue can be identified by the imprints of the teeth on the lateral margin of the tongue giving it a scalloped appearance which is notable in this image. The other factors related to tongue which is going to influence the normal occlusion are posture of tongue and tongue thrusting. The normal resting position of the tongue is retracted where the tip of the tongue lies just behind the lower incisors and the lateral border of the tongue rests on the lingual occlusal surface of the mandibular teeth. In case of class 2, the tip of the tongue is retruded and in case of class 3, the tip of the tongue lies far forward. Both simple and complex tongue thrust can cause malocclusion because of altered posture. Bimaxillary spacing and anterior open bites are the result of tongue thrust. The next thing we need to examine is the palate. Palatal depth is important here. Palatal depth varies with facial form, where dolicofacial patients have deep palates. In severe class 2 division 2 conditions with complete deep bite, we can able to appreciate the palatal indentations of mandibular teeth. Also, we need to check for any swelling on the palate which might be indicative of impacted teeth, cyst or any bony pathologies. Mucosal ulceration can also be present as a result of traumatic deep bite and clefts can also be seen as discontinuity in palate. Also, we should note that the third row gaze is always in line with the canines. So, with the help of this, we can able to appreciate the proclination of the anteriors. Also, we need to look for any post-surgical scar tissue which might restrict the maxillary growth and diminishes the prognosis for development of maxillary arch. Moving on to examination of gingiva, where we could able to see anterior marginal gingivitis in patients who are mouth breathers due to incompetent lips. Also in traumatic occlusion, we can able to appreciate localized gingival stripping. When the patient is under drugs like dilantin, hyperplastic gingiva is visible and in case of class 2 division 2, gingival stripping particularly in lower anteriors is notable. Moving on to examination of frenum. Frenum is a fold of mucous membrane, usually with enclosed muscle fibers that attaches the lips and cheeks to the alveolar mucosa or gingiva and underlying periosteum. Sometimes, the tension on the frenum may tend to open the sulcus. The maxillary label frenum can at times be thick, fibrous and attached relatively low. Such an attachment prevents the two maxillary central incisors from approximating each other and thereby predisposing to midline diastema. So if the maxillary labial frenum is attached to very low, the two central incisors can't approximate with each other and it will lead to midline diastema. Also, abnormally high attachment of the mandibular labial frenum can cause recession of the gingiva in that particular area. The lingual frenum should also be looked for any ankylosis or tongue tie. Presence of ankyloglossia results in a lower position of the tongue, thereby predisposing to unrestrained buccinator activity and narrowing of the maxillary arch. We can do some tests to identify the abnormal frenal attachment, such as Blanche test and tension test. In Blanche test, the upper lip is stretched upwards and outwards for some period of time. Presence of blanche in the region of the interdental papilla is diagnostic of the high frenal attachment. Moving on to examination of tonsils and adenoids. The size and degree of inflammation of the tonsils should be examined if any present. Abnormally inflamed tonsil can cause alteration in tongue and jaw posture. Thereby, it will upset the orofacial balance which in turn leads to malocclusion. Moving on to assessment of dentition where we need to check for the teeth present inside the oral cavity, like the number of teeth present in the oral cavity. The teeth which are unerupted, 
the teeth which are missing, the status of dentition, supernumerary teeth if any present, presence of caries, restorations, malformations, hyperplasia, wear and discoloration, molar relation, incisor relation and canine relation, overjet and overbite, transverse malrelations, arch form and arch symmetry. Initially, we need to check for the number of teeth present inside the oral cavity and we should make a note of it. Next, we need to look for unerupted teeth. Please note that teeth which are unerupted and missing are different. Unerupted teeth have not been pressed before, but missing teeth was once seen in the oral cavity, but now is missing due to some extraction due to caries or any traumatic reason. Sometimes missing teeth can also be because of hypodontia caused by ectodermal dysplasia, Down syndrome and cleft palate. We need to check for some supernumerary teeth like mesiodents, paramolar, distomolar and parapremolar. Also we need to check for tooth size anomalies where discrepancy between the teeth size and arch size can lead to malocclusion. So the most common anomalies are small sized maxillary lateral incisors and smaller sized mandibular premolars. An increased size of the teeth will result in crowding and a decreased size will result in spacing. Abnormal eruption path should be noted with the help of wrong side of a tooth. Malposition of the tooth bud can lead to ectopic eruption of a tooth which is the tooth is erupting at the wrong side. Permanent maxillary first molar and mandibular incisor are frequently affected teeth. Also any premature loss of deciduous teeth or retained deciduous teeth can lead to malocclusion. If the deciduous teeth is lost prematurely, loss of space is there due to which there is derangement of the occlusion. If the deciduous teeth is retained, there is no space for the permanent teeth to erupt which again causes malocclusion. Mostly primary canines and second molars are retained. Now let's see what are the abnormal tooth shape and what effect do they have orthodontically in the oral cavity. If we see fusion of the teeth, it will lead to spacing and dental arches. Gemination will lead to discrepancy in arch length and tooth material, causing crowding. In dilaceration, the tooth may fail to erupt at normal level. In case of talon's cusp, it prevents establishment of normal overjet and overbite. Peg laterals will cause spacing and migration of teeth. Leong premolars have normal intercuspation with the opposing teeth. And if mulberry molars are present, it will cause irregular occlusal surfaces of molars. We will check the molar relation, incisor relation and canine relation using the... We will check for the molar, incisor and canine relation as in the classification of malocclusion that we usually study. Overjet. It is the horizontal overlapping between upper and lower anterior teeth. The normal value of overjet is between 2 to 3 mm. The overjet can be increased, decreased, edge to edge or reverse overjet or crossbite. Now how do we measure the overjet? Overjet can be measured from the labial surface of the mandibular anteriors to incisal edges of maxillary anteriors. If the overjet is 2 mm, it is class 1. If the overjet is more than 2 mm, it is class 2. And if it is less than 2 mm, it is class 3. Moving on to overbite. It is the vertical overlap between upper and lower anterior teeth. Again, the normal value of overbite is 2 to 3 mm and it can be varying between deep bite, close bite and open bite. Next, we need to check for curve of SPI. Curve of SPI is defined as anatomic curvature of the occlusal alignment of the teeth beginning at the tip of the lower canine, following the buccal cusp of the natural premolars, molars, continuing to the anterior border of the ramus. Flat curve of SPI is normal. Deep curve of SPI is seen in more confined area which is seen in crowding and reverse curve of SPI results in an extensive room which is in spacing. Next we need to check for the arch form. In class 1 the arch form is square, in class 2 it is tapered and in class 3 it is ovoid. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Do like this video and subscribe to Medinair for more. Thanks for watching.